when bubbles collide. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I am guested by Arena, which um, you were featured just like, what, six podcasts ago, I think? I don't have the math ready. Something <laughs> like that. So we're very excited to finally talk in person. We have a doggo here. So doggo will be a special guest. <laughs> and she's being very cute. So I wanna talk about bubbles colliding. Yeah. I know we kind of went on Discord and we were going through all the ways um, to discuss this topic, but honestly, I'd like to throw it to you. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so I think one of the most pertinent examples I have is Brittany visiting me here in my home, interacting with my inner circle, um, which is interesting because you and I only know each other from the internet. Right. So, right. And we've met before, but it was like not... Still kind of through the internet, yeah, right? Yeah, basically through the internet. So um, it was very interesting to have Brittany interact with people in my life. Um, and... I think this situation was really interesting and I'd say comfortable, but I think there's also times where when you don't intend for bubbles to mm. collide, um, where things can get a little uncomfortable. Um, yeah. And I have some examples as well, but I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Well, I'll say like as a YouTuber, I often like reference like my real life. And the thing is, is like you, so now I've met your inner circle, but you haven't interacted with mine mm -hmm. and there's a lot about my life that I haven't shared with you. And at the same time, because, you know, we know each other from the internet, you know a lot about my life in like mm -hmm. a weird way. And I think this idea of bubbles is again, not to demoralize, not to demonize, not mm -hmm. to say like my bubble's better than your bubble, even though we all think our bubbles are better than everyone mm -hmm. else's bubbles. It's to say that look at the way we're living so differently or maybe similar and look at the ways we overlap. Like I know mm -hmm. that your energy, the moment I talked to you, I was like, oh, vibes. <laughs> but so different all the same. But yet we had all this great overlap. We're very like opinionated. We're very secure in who we are. We're very sure of ourselves. And I think that's what's so complementary to our dynamic. And again, the dynamic is like an all changing dynamic. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how long you'll be in my life. I don't know how long I'll know mm -hmm. you. I don't know. I don't know. But what's exciting is at least we're making an effort to sort of like keep the bubbles at least a little overlap. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I definitely, that, that's like an interesting example with like your boundary as like a content creator, which totally makes sense. Um, I actually had a situation recently where, um, so for me personally, I have a very distinct uh, kind of, I don't want to say, I don't know if boundaries is the right word, but delineations between um, like family, romantic partner, yeah. and then friends. Mm -hmm. um, recently, um, I did have a friend come stay with us for a few days, and she witnessed a kind of vulnerable moment mm -hmm. between my partner and I. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is initially I vented to her about this moment, mm -hmm. um, and then, but then she also witnessed it. And I felt that discomfort. I was like, oh, what's what's going on? Is it because I don't have control over her mm. perception of um, my, you know, inner circle moments? Um, that was that was very interesting. What what ended up um, having to happen after anything? Did you have to talk about it with her? No. It was just something that you internalized it, and paid yes. attention to. Yes. And, you know, I know that for um, at least when my boyfriend and I discussed this, he was saying, you know, when I witness moments like that, where a person's like not necessarily, you know, wanting to be vulnerable in this mm. way with me, it's uncomfortable for me too. Yeah. It's also like, oh my gosh, like I'm almost like intruding. I feel bad that they're having to kind of um, air these things out in front of me. Um, and you know, an example that he gave me was one time he was playing video games with this, oh no, not video games. He was just playing games with his friends mm -hmm. in the house. Okay. And then that same like at that moment his parents called him downstairs told him they're getting a divorce oh! and he had to go back and play video ga play games with his friends upstairs wait they told him he had homies over yeah i mean yeah apparently <laughs> i don't know the full detail i know my she idea. is not like that she's like i am not about that life <laughs> That's crazy though. I've had so many moments like that mm -hmm. or even you know even amongst my family gosh I'm home visiting right now my parents mm -hmm. before I go to Europe and there are moments at the table where my parents will say something very politically charged and, mm -hmm. and they know they're looking at me because and I'm just like not talking and I'm just mm -hmm. like looking anywhere else and all my siblings like will freeze and everyone will be like mm -hmm. <laughs> and then eventually we'll have to like make a comment or say something mm -hmm. or I'll just go like you know all have like different journeys my bro, <laughs> yeah. something like that but yeah there's something to be said about like one bubbles collide mm -hmm. you know what's crazy is like now that i'm home i'm recognizing so much of my home bubble and where i was raised like okay the other day mm -hmm. my brother was ranting about tate and my parents were like why do you like andrew tate he's not a good person 
But then I had a conversation with my mother and I was like, the victim blaming is very loud in this family. Like it's very, <laughs> it's always the women, no matter the circumstance, how obvious it's the guy. My parents kind of, my mom in particular, does voice like a disdain for the women. And it's interesting. She goes, I hold them to a higher standard because women are smarter than men. Which is like, <laughs> sort of like internalized like yeah. sexism a little bit. Not to be such a progressive, but I was yeah. like, and then I, like, in my head, I was like, well, that's why your son likes Tate, bro. Yeah. Because she wondered. She's like, why does my son like Tate? I was like, for the, because he hears you talk and I hear you talk. And even I go, man, you should go on Fresh and Fit, mom. <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy because I know they don't like Tate or Fresh and Fit. Mm -hmm. They think they're kind of shameful. Mm -hmm. But then look at the way these bubbles all overlap. And there's a reason why Tate does get through to these conservatives or these people with more like traditional lifestyles because there's just enough overlap. Mm -hmm. Just enough bubble. Yeah, even though they might be looking at it from like a different lens, but they end up looking at the same mm -hmm. area, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Different lens, but you end up in the same spot. The same spot. It's so interesting to me. Well, that's kind of the conundrum I think a lot of us are facing is the bubble you're born into, the bubble you were raised in, the mm -hmm. like, and the, I need to come up with better language for distinguishing which bubble we're talking about. Because again, mm -hmm. there's the belief bubble you're born into, the one your neighbors have that are different from you, and especially come from in mm -hmm. immigrant backgrounds, like they're is the culture you came from, mm -hmm. the bubble you came from, and then the one you jumped into. And so there's so many overlaps of bubbles and hence the chaos, hence why I don't believe in world peace. Hence that, like I can't get my family to agree mm -hmm. on who the bad guy and good guy is in the story. And also to like even put it back down on the micro, we can't even always be comfortable sharing mm -hmm. all parts of ourselves right. with like five people, right? right? There, that's why there's like an inner circle which might be smaller or bigger, but like for me personally, I'd say it's fairly small. Same. Um, and even within the people, even for the people within my inner circle, they don't always get to see all of the parts. Same, same. Um, and so they, each individual within that bubble has different rules for interaction and you know what kinds of things um we're comfortable discussing um and what kinds of things we're comfortable with doing um so even that already creates some sort of tension mm. because when there's this unintentional collision um that can create discomfort it can shift the way relationships go or strengthen them as well yes yes um so that, I, I think that definitely like apply it on the macro and bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> there was um, this instance where my mom was talking about COVID. She's like casually doing dishes, bros. Mm -hmm. Casually doing dishes. And she goes, you know why they shut down everything for three years? To keep everyone away from church. And I was like, <laughs> and I didn't say anything because I was like, wait, what is this? And she goes, I know, Betsy, you think it's crazy, but I think everything's about Jesus. And I think that they were trying to keep people from going to church. And I was like, like, again, like, maybe one or two people, but, like, a whole organization doesn't care that much. The government just doesn't mm -hmm. care that much about religion. Like, I just mm -hmm. don't feel like they're invested the same way. But because it's her bubble and because it's brought her so much joy, she also mm -hmm. was saying, like, there's nothing bad that's ever happening because of religion. Nothing. Mm -hmm. She said it's the man who corrupts the religion, right? And that's what makes it bad. And, again, I'm not here to, to say, like, oh, you should be anti-religious or you shouldn't hate or you shouldn't love religion or something or you shouldn't be religious. But it's this idea of like, this is it right here. This is what we're facing as a human species is that everyone is having a different relationship. But my dad says, if I don't like, he goes, if you don't believe the election was rigged, we're not talking about the like reality. And I was like, we're not talking about the same mm -hmm. reality. Cause like, what does it mean to have a rigged election? Isn't all politics like shysty? So again, like, I don't even know why they get so conspiracy, like conspiracy energy. Mm -hmm. where I'm like, it's not a conspiracy that humans are going to human. Yes. It's like, it's like that paranoid energy that you talk about with... Yes. And I think that applies to kind of... I mean, like you already proved with your work. It applies mm. to any group. Mm. Everybody thinks they're being targeted. Ugh. Whether it's the whole like, you know, white replacement or whatever it's called. Everybody. Um, everybody. The Democrats think they're being targeted. The conservatives think they're being ta targeted. Um, and maybe we are um, all targeting each other because we're afraid mm -hmm. that if I don't do it first, you're going to do it first. And my brain is like, are we all in survival mode right now? Like reacting to reactions instead of just saying like, we have to start by chilling. Like mm -hmm. I, this fresh and fit person, our fan was like writing on my comments and they're like, men are dying out here, Brittany. Men are dying. And I was like, 
women, humans yeah, are dying. Everybody's <laughs> dying. Like, I have some statistics for you, but... Yeah, everybody's <laughs> like, not only that, he goes, don't you know about the feminist, um, something like feminist infiltration in the government? I was like, yeah, yeah, ever heard of the patriarchy? Because that's the guy's version. And it's yeah. like, yeah, we all have our own versions of what we mm-hmm. think is the reason we're not successful, the reason we're not this, the reason... And it's probably just not as conspiracy-oriented as it is just, like, human. It's yeah. just human to want your people to succeed. It's human yeah. to want your tribe to be successful. And it's human to be sus of other people. No, exactly. And it, that's why I like calling it, like, my monkey tribe. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I want to hang out with these little monkeys. Yeah. I want to hang out with those little monkeys. And yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Right? Every every little monkey tribe wants to do their own thing. Um, And I think that's kind of at least been something that I've been working on mm. is... You know, I want my boundaries to be respected and I want to be able to curate my bubble and my circle Mm -hmm. freely. Um, And so if I'm getting the sense that somebody doesn't want me in their bubble or circle or like in their proximity, then I need to respect that as well. Um, And I think... I think that's maybe what people are struggling with, especially Mm -hmm. with this loneliness epidemic thing. Mm. It's like you want to... You want this bubble to interact with you, but then you don't want to put in the effort to be appealing to that bubble. Ooh. You want that bubble to change for you. Mm. So you, you're already attracted to this bubble, but instead of then thinking, okay, what can I do to be more appealing to this bubble, you know, the, the, this bitterness builds up. Honestly, even I have resentment. My last video about Ethan Klein, somebody was like, yo, you should change the title because it makes it sound like you hate Ethan and then Ethan's team won't give you the time of day because you won't be able to appeal to them. And I do resent that idea. So I did change it slightly to make sure that if this is so, and I resent it, there's a part of me that's like so annoyed that I have to handhold everyone Mm -hmm. into understanding I'm not the bad person here or like the, I'm not, I don't have anything malicious. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's, It is, like, what bubble am I trying to appeal to? Who am I trying to, like, I'm okay, I'm safe, I'm not trying to hurt you. But it's so exhausting. Like, there are people, like, I I showed my sister my Twitter yesterday. I was like, look at these tweets. Mm -hmm. They're literally just people who follow me to tell me I'm a piece of shit every day. And you ask, you're asking me to make peace with those mm-hmm. people. Those people can't make peace with themselves. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even... Girl, I am so busy with my day. I couldn't even imagine. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even imagine spending that time. Don't you have family or friends or something to do with your time? And that's the dilemma. You want to talk about loneliness? Getting on Twitter to yeah. yell at a YouTuber you hate. <laughs> like, that is so sad. It's like mm-hmm. the mo- it, like makes me want to die. Like, I'm like, this is so depressing. I can't bring my kids into this world. Yeah. Like, yeah. there's something so sad about that. I, I do wonder, too. Like, there's... um. And I, I'm not an expert on all of the statistics or anything, um, but haven't there always been people who kind of struggled with loneliness? Mm. Like, I don't know, like, maybe the numbers are rising due to technology or whatever, but I feel like there's ways to adapt, um, mm. and you need to have discipline with the new tools that we have access to, yeah. right? Just because you can sit on the computer and play League all day, Maybe don't do that if you're struggling with loneliness. <laughs> or go to the internet like or, I did. I feel yeah. like I sent a beacon out to the internet. I was mm-hmm. like, hi, does anyone want to talk to me about these things I like talking about? Mm-hmm. And like Manor Circle's great. They fulfill me in many ways. But there's always something joyful about finding a different perspective, mm-hmm. finding a different energy, bonding with people that aren't necessarily in my inner circle. Just to give me a little bit of a twist, a little bit of a, ooh, I never heard that before. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? So I did that. And look, not only did I meet my husband, Mm -hmm. but like I'm meeting new friends. And for me, that's like the joy of it. I'm like, yes, please. Like, yes, please. But again, I use, utilize the internet as a tool, not as my end all be all. Exactly. That's, I think like, that's what sometimes people misunderstand about touch grass. It's like touch grass as in literally actually make, put in the effort on, into making connections with people. I feel like a lot of the people that I've met that might fall into that lonely category, you can try and handhold them through the, mm. through it. But if they sometimes just don't want it, they aren't ready for it. They're not going to eat the cupcake. Yeah. Literally, this is what I'm trying to explain in terms of introspection, extrospection. If you're starving in the desert and someone hands you a cupcake, you're like, mm, not my favorite flavor. I'm out. And it's like, bro, eat the cupcake. You're starving. It's like, have that relation. I just had a homie who legit is always complaining about being single. She's sitting on a park bench and this hot man, this hot man allegedly sits next to her, has a college degree, is educated to her level, and is literally talking to her for an hour and a half. And then she's like, it was amazing. And then he left. I was like, 
did, did you get his number? And she was just like, I didn't think about that. And I was like, I'm going to kill myself. I'm like, bros, it's not. Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But like, again, and again, maybe it's my fault because I say yes to every, the mm -hmm. last three years, I said yes to every date, basically. Mm -hmm. Even if they came through my OnlyFans, even if they came mm -hmm. through the internet, I was like, sure, I'll go on a Zoom date with you. Yeah, because you could be it. Mm -hmm. You could be it, and I'm not gonna pass up this opportunity while knowing I want a partner. And look, I'm a, I'm happy to go on a hundred bad dates. I don't care. Yeah, like I do not care. I'll even do you the service of doing it on Zoom, so none of us have to spend money, mm -hmm. gas, or food. Yeah, but like, I'm willing to go. The, like I'll do whatever because at the end of the day, this is something that is a priority of mine. And again, I'm not shaming people who are differently personality than me mm -hmm. because my personality is so aggressive and dominant. I'm comfortable being like, "Hey, you want to go out with me?" Yeah, I understand that. But again, like you said, it's adapting to the bubble, mm -hmm. the bubble of the dating game. If you're a heterosexual, like my friend is, you're playing a different game. Maybe you want the man to ask you out, but then you gotta kind of yeah. let him know he's safe. Funny enough, I think some of my friends are so stuck in the 90s and 2000s. Oh, girl, we trying to record a podcast, girl. <laughs> but anyways, okay, it's not about shaming people for who <laughs> they are. It's about asking yourself, like, can you just be okay with who you are? Yes, and I and that's the thing. Like, you got, I feel like you gotta know yourself, mm. right? And I feel like there's like this incongruence when somebody is, you know. I want to describe this person like lonely, maybe like a neat, or maybe they do work, but they don't really get out much. They never had the opportunity to socialize in school, etc. for whatever reason. Um, but I think there's the, yeah, this incongruence between I so badly want it to be different. Mm. And at the same time, I'm not going to change anything, anything. The, and it can be a very um, off putting energy to deal with. Because it, it often, like, and I understand why it can build, like, bitterness and resentment. Um, but that's that's definitely, I would say, if you are trying to bring people into your bubble, I feel like that's not the energy you'd want to start with. Yeah. Unless, you know, and then you create, or you do attract those people, but they're people like you. No. Nope. Who then, instead of, instead of you guys be, ma making connections, like, genuine connections, you both kind of just build on each other's resentment and bitterness um resentment and bitterness is something because like um mm -hmm. you know andrew heberman huberman the guy the neuroscientist that everyone has on his, their podcast now he just talked about this in a study and mm -hmm. i'll try to reference it where he said like women typically want men who are kind optimistic mm -hmm. warm loving like we're looking at these men as possible fathers mm -hmm. possible caretakers to our children so like having this man who's gonna like hit around our kids or beat yeah. our offspring is our monkey brains are like what the fuck Yes. What is happening? Like, yes, in some ways, our monkey brain thinks, like, protection. But in another way, in a modern world, like, the last thing I need is my husband to rough around our kids, bro. Yeah, that or if, on the other end, if he's not doing anything. If he's if he's not taking charge of his own life mm -hmm. and his own situation, mm -hmm. that's also not very, um, it's like... That's when you end up feeling like, oh, I'm his mother. Yeah. And be like, okay, like, come on, clean your room. You know, like, you don't want to do that. You don't no. want to be put in that position generally. Mm -mm. Um, not to say that there's not women who do end up in those positions consensually and sure. they want to take on that role. Um, but is that the type of woman, you know, a lot of these guys want? I don't know. I don't know. They often, you know, sometimes they'll talk about like wanting a more traditional woman but that's not going to be someone who wants to mother you. Bro, <laughs> literally my dad and mom always brag about how they raised me to be CEO, right? Mm -hmm. so like, Betsy, we raised you to run a business. And then my parents go, what do you mean you're going to be the breadwinner? You're not going to stay <laughs> home and take care of the kids? I was like, you just, ma'am, yeah. you raised me my whole life to make money. It's like the one thing I know how to do. And now you're telling me that I should stay home and take care of my kids, which don't get me wrong. Like, Sure, in an ideal world where I have billions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> if a bazillion dollars fell on my lap right sure. now, I'll be I'll the manage. most perfect housewife. I'll in manage. The world. <laughs> but like, that's not how life works. If I don't work, I don't make money, right? Yeah. So this idea is so funny. They train you one way, and then they're like, "Wait, she's actually gonna follow through and not become mm -hmm. like they didn't." You know what? I wasn't even trained to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm. I was raised to raise kids, though. I was I was trained mm. to raise children, which again is why I think I'm gonna end up being like a stern mother if I have children because I know how to run a company. <laughs> But yeah. I, you know, and I, I can be warm with kids, but I end up being kind of like a boy anyways. Where I'm like, what's up, bro? What's <laughs> up? To like my nieces and nephews. And I'm like, let's play, let's rough house. So again, I don't, it's so funny when your bubble mm. informs you and then you grow up and kind of clash with that bubble. And I think that's yeah. what was so hard for me. The existential dread brought me to making up the levels. It brought me to figuring out bubbles. It brought me to being very patient with people as well. 
because there is like so much being back home reminds me of like oh my gosh this is why i can't be at home like there's a reality difference so strong it's insane like i can't even start to explain it where i'm like wow we really just like don't even see the world slightly now i am someone i am my mother to somebody else Right? I am, people are also looking at me like, whoa, Brittany's crazy. She's not even living yeah. in my reality. And I'm like, exactly. Yeah. That's, hence the chaos. Hence also how beautiful human beings are. Because look at us all sharing the same planet and having a completely different relationship with it. Yeah, about responsibility um, when the bubbles do collide. Mm. So who holds, you know, what role? Um, if we use the loneliness example, mm. we can say, okay, society as a whole is responsible for cultivating this or for um, not having the support. The support Wait, when you say society, clarify for us. Are you so, saying sure. states, cities, countries? Um, I would probably... Continents? Ooh, so yeah, I don't know how global I want to go with that. I think I'm, I am speaking from a US centric yeah. perspective here. Um, and I will say, although I do know that there's like very similar or even maybe more extreme conversations regarding loneliness and people being neats in Korea and Japan mm. as well. Um, so maybe I'll say like the developed world or okay. yeah. Um, and I don't want to generalize too much. Right. But. I wonder if it's, because this is like also something that I hear a lot from um, the autistic bubble mm. is, and by autistic bubble, I don't mean people who have autism or whatever. I sp specifically mean the space on the internet, like actually autistic, yeah. the people who um, discuss how ABA is harmful, etc. So I'm talking about that bubble, uh, which doesn't include all autistic people. Mm -hmm. So um, something that I hear from the, that autistic bubble is that the world is not built for neurodivergence. Yeah. Um, and I wonder... I wonder like if that is also contributing to that but then I don't know if the, like those statistics that ABBA talks about would then reflect that or are we becoming more neurodivergent mm -hmm. but then not building society for ourselves mm -hmm. what is ABBA what do you mean like what does it stand for ABBA. Oh, ABA, you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, ABA is Applied Behavioral Analysis, okay. um, and it's one of the most common, like, therapies um, provided to autistic children, and mm -hmm. there's, like, some evidence that it can cause PTSD and Ooh. whatnot. Yeah, so there's definitely, um, you know, some um, autistic activism, uh, you know, advocating for stopping ABA. Mm -hmm. um, and um, instead doing stuff like occupational therapy and just kind of very individualized um, or therapies that are um, more catered to individual children um, mm. and also uh, therapies that steer away from trying to change a child's autistic traits. Okay. So okay. sometimes ABA, they will try to get you to stop stimming or mm. things like that or use um, kind of like reinforcement, like negative or positive reinforcement. Which okay, is, but... I don't want to derail your thought. Yeah, no Are worries. you, if I say something, will it derail your original thought? Um, say it, because I, I will remember. Okay, um, I'm trying to think of... So Excuse I, me, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have it, I have it, if you okay. want to say your thing. Yeah. I want to say, I was watching Love on the Spectrum, mm -hmm. and I kept like getting a little frustrated that everyone was trying to teach them how to be more neurotypical, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, ma'am, can't they just be neurodivergent, but they play to the strengths of that neurodivergency? Yes. Because I feel like that's what I'm doing when I'm in public and I am recognizing that, like, oh, Brittany's being weird. I'm like, okay, so I can mask this much, but I'm not trying to be mm -hmm. like you. I'm trying to be a little bit just more mannered, mm -hmm. but I'm also not trying to deny myself my humanity. Mm -hmm. But I, so I know there's like just like toting a line, but I don't want to be like, oh, you have to pull a chair out for a girl. It's like, yeah. not everyone does that. Even if you're yeah. neurotypical, not everybody pulls a chair out for a girl. Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to teach them to pull chairs out for girls? Yeah. Like, that's not a thing that happens in every bubble. So mm -hmm. my dilemma I'm having is like, there's the, even the script where they're like, oh, if you have autism, you should act like this bubble. Yeah. And I'm like, but you're choosing a bubble. Yeah. You're not choosing neurotypical versus neurodivergent. You're choosing a, like a specific yes. bubble. You know what I mean? Um. Yes. I was going to say... Well, in that case, also, like, whose responsibility is that? Like, to, um, is it on, is it on, like, is it on the larger bubbles? Like, and, and by larger bubbles, I mean, okay, so we have the home bubble, like, yep. at home. Mm -hmm. We have our friend's bubble. We're going out into public now. Mm -hmm. And in a big city, I feel like that can feel, like, very Ugh. broad. Um, so it's interesting how different responsibilities are placed um 
in different bubbles, right? So for example, in a big city, like the one I live in, um, if there's, you know, homeless people kind of yelling on the street, you're just like, all right. And then you yeah. walk along, you know, it's not, it's not like a shocking sight to see. Um, oftentimes when people come visit, they'll be shocked at the amount of homeless people here, or they'll be shocked at how people are acting. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there's like, and, and also in a big city, if you see a child stimming or having a meltdown, again, you also just kind of mind your business. Mm -hmm. Whereas in other bubbles, the social responsibilities maybe look a little bit different where if where people will discipline other people's yes, kids. Yes, yeah. Or totally. they might say something to someone who is having some sort of mental mm -hmm. health a moment. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's inter it's interesting. And I wonder what contributes to that division of social responsibility. And even when it comes to things like loneliness, whose responsibility is it that you are lonely, that you don't have friends? Is it your families? Is it your inner circles? Is it just yours? I do tend to think of like, okay, like for your own socialization, you have the power over that. Mm. But I also recognize that we're a social species and that to an extent it is um, the people who care about you hold mm -hmm. a certain responsibility towards your health. And then what if you have no one that cares about you? Is the government <laughs> supposed to care about you in Bro. a way, right? And to what extent? <laughs> I feel like if I have kids and they end up being like super neurodivergent, which <laughs> given his background <laughs> and my background, oh lord. And so I kind of want to explain to them like, hi, I have decided to birth you and force you into existence. And because I've done that, I'm not going to give you the tools that I was never given, nor was he, until we figured it out because of the internet that we could gather these tools. And these are tools to help you navigate different bubbles. They are not tools to shame you. They are not tools mm -hmm. to change you. They are tools to give you an option of how you would like to be perceived. Because again, you, the, per the perception of people in mm -hmm. of you in their head is always going to be different from the real you. So you have to be okay with them perceiving you differently than you think of yourself. And two, I want you to know that you can, if you would like, to play some social game with people. You can do that. Mm -hmm. Everyone's playing it. We're just playing different versions of it. And so, like, you'll know from the, the Discord VC, like, there are certain people in my community that I vibe with so much because mm -hmm. they're so themselves and they say things out loud i'm like mm, i fuck with this i fuck with the honesty i want my kids to be honest i want them to say what they feel in this bubble where it's safe mm -hmm. and then when you go and operate in other people's bubbles because the world is chaotic and i don't want you to get accidentally killed or th seen as threatening i want to have a conversation with my kids where again we're just saying that yeah like you're hopping into someone else's bubble mm -hmm. someone just asked me this recently where they're like do you ever get this theory or feeling like you're smarter than everyone else and i was like I think what that is, is not actually thinking you're smarter than everyone else, but feeling so alienated from the world that you feel like, well, no one understands me. And because mm -hmm. I understand me, I must know something they don't know. Mm -hmm. But what you know is yourself, which in yeah. some ways, you know, to be honest with you, is kind of a leg up because a lot of people don't know themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, mm -hmm. it's, that's why that feeling of superiority comes out with a lot of people who are neurodivergent. I think they're coming out with this, like, I know these things. And I'm like, we all know things somebody doesn't know. Yeah. <laughs> so everyone feels that way. Everyone feels smarter than the next person. But at the mm. same time, what we really are is we just know something so deeply profound about ourselves or the thing we know that it makes us feel like we're the smartest person in the room. But we're really not. We're all just trying our best. And of course, there's always someone who's smarter than you. Like, God, I hope I'm never the smartest person in the room, right? The idea is to learn from one another. But I do think that first and foremost, it has to be me. I have to be the person mm. who gives my kids those tools. And then I want the internet to be a tool that I've given mm -hmm. my child to look for more tools. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I do also wonder, like, that idea that you said, um, that feeling is knowing yourself mm. and how it applies to the levels, right? Mm. Because I think, I think we all... I think there's like always that tingly feeling of, like, not tingly feeling, but there, there's always the inkling of knowing yourself. Mm. Um... I think it's there. I think you just got to discover it. Yeah. And it's that process of, I think, discovering and also articulating it, being able to articulate it um, and be able to skillfully share that with others, with mm. your inner circle or whoever you choose to. Absolutely. That I think is that piece, like, you know. Yeah. Can you expand on that? Because I'm curious, because I, even in my last, last podcast, I said mm. to the, I put a comment saying like, hey guys you know, I use Britney language and I just don't mm -hmm. want people to feel like I'm too harsh. And it is yeah. like someone left a comment saying, oh yeah, like I can hear this in your voice. So I know what you're saying, but I'm sure other people will hear it and think like, 
I can't believe she just said that. Like, what do you mean I don't deserve love? What do you mean I only deserve the love that I'm I'm giving? What does that mean? Because that could be taken so many ways. Yeah. So at what point do I have to work my ass off to make sure 8 billion people understand me? And at what point am I just going to die from the exhaustion? Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think so what I... Yeah, because it's not possible, to, I think, to be understood by everybody. Right. But I do think that being able to articulate it to yourself. Oh, okay, I got and you. And then articulate it also to others, and then whoever, totally. you know, you see each other, and you're like, all right, I got you. To- totally. Right? And so I, think, I, I, so I think we all know it. We just can't explain it to ourselves. Um, and I think that's part of that introspection journey as well. That's really good. To, to find that piece of yourself um, in there somewhere, because it's there. I think everybody has it. I think everybody has. Um, I grant everybody the same internal complexity I grant myself. Mm. Um, so I think everybody has really rich inner worlds that maybe they just haven't walked around in yet. I think mean, that's really lovely. Actually, it reminds me of that relationship that you have with, like, yes, yourself, mm-hmm. but also, I, wait, hold on, I lost it. Wait, I had the train of thought. Having the relationship with yourself, knowing what it is in yourself, identifying it in yourself. Oh, I don't know, but I'm going to do a different thought now. Mm-hmm. I will say, when I was younger, I felt like I I was, like, throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. And I was definitely jumping into other people's bubbles mm-hmm. and, like, are you my joy? Are you my joy? Are you my joy? And I realized, like, my joy was rooted within me. It exists mm-hmm. only within me. And it doesn't really come from the world. Mm-hmm. But I will say there's something to be said about having that relationship and how many times I've gone it wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, how many times I've missed um re- like miss what's this called like dis miss chosen miss yeah there's like, a word i'm looking for mm. like i've m- i've miss um mistook mm-hmm. one answer for another so i thought this was my joy oh but it was just like happiness mm-hmm. oh i thought this was my joy oh, it was just happiness and happiness is great but it is temporary so i was never fulfilled in those bubbles i was jumping into and again i was looking for existence instead of existing mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. give me my joy so you're right. I think also that relationship you have with your yourself is the key to also being kind to the world. Mm-hmm. Because when I, like, I just, if you know those sayings, like, oh, love yourself so you can love the world. There's something to be said about yeah. that. If you dig deep down, because there's, there's certain people, going back to what you said earlier, that are so pessimistic. So just, like, they grate on my consciousness because I'm like, eat the cupcake or get out. Mm -hmm. Because, like, at this point, your self-sabotage of negativity is so grating to me that I'm like, my bro, life is hard. Yeah. We all have to struggle through it. You do not get to be the extra grumpy person who acts like, why didn't it happen for me? And I'm like, well, it didn't happen for any of us. Yeah. Nothing happened for us. We had to either make it and or be born into the right family. But still, Mm -hmm. that relationship with yourself, introspection, does not have a class, does not have a race, does not have an orientation. Do you know what I'm saying? You can be born into the richest family ever. If anything, that might mess up your introspection. Yeah. And I think what people, people are scared of that risk. I think that's what people often say um, when they are dealing, this kind of turned into a loneliness video, but (laughs) (laughs) when, when they discuss like, oh, what would be even the point of making friends, of trying to go for relationships? I'm just going to get rejected. I'm going to get betrayed. Mm. But so we have all experienced that, right? Like there's not a single person on earth that just perfectly had these perfect relationships, I guess, unless they're born into that perfect bubble for themselves. But I just, I guess, possible. Yeah. But I don't know anybody that has never been betrayed, has never, yeah. um, had their heart broken has never been rejected we've all been rejected we've all had our heart broken we've all been betrayed um by the people we didn't expect to and that but because we did it we now can pick better Mm -hmm. we now have Mm -hmm. um an idea of what to look for and what not to look for we have an idea of what kinds of people we are compatible with and not compatible with but if you just sit there avoiding risk then you're not going to develop and you're just going to sit there and continue resenting everything and using, I think, coping mechanisms to an unhealthy degree, Mm -hmm. like the internet or, you know, like, you know, some people struggle with OnlyFans Mm -hmm. addictions or porn addictions. Mm -hmm. By the way, join my OnlyFans. Yes. I'm just kidding. Join her OnlyFans. That's such a dark joke to make right now. (laughs) (laughs) But like, honestly, Dr. K just said this on yeah. his stream um, with Destiny. He said, like, honestly, the best way to find a good relationship is to have a couple bad ones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've all had bad relationships. And, like, living in fear of those is what's holding, I think, a lot of people back. Yeah. Because they're so scared of experiencing heartbreak. But, like, bros, we've all had 
That I used experience. to think I was so special, like, oh, I can't let down my walls. I'm so deep and <laughs> profound. And now I'm like, yeah, it's not that deep, bro. Yeah. It's just like, don't hurt my feelings. I'm going to cry about it later. I'm pretty vulnerable. Like, don't hurt my feelings. <laughs> but it took me a long time to realize, like, I don't really have that anything that's a deep, dark secret. Like, I've never, mm. like, I don't know. I've never done anything that I'd yeah. be afraid of the world really knowing. I think it's just more the vulnerability is scary. But, oh, my gosh, to be vulnerable with someone, to give someone the opportunity to be like, here, do this, something with this and let me see what you do with it mm -hmm. is kind of a power move as well. It's trying yeah. to say like, Hey, I already know what I have. I'm going to package it for you. I hope you like it. If you don't give it back to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's the, that's the journey of it. Okay. Wait, I want to say, Oh, I was thinking about this the other day in terms of bubble hopping. I bubble hop sometimes into people's bubbles and mm -hmm. it makes them think I'm one of them mm -hmm. and, or that I'm going to be one of them. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I'm struggling with right now is how do I bubble hop without teasing people and leading them on, friends, family, whatever, to thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to, oh my gosh, like she's going to be one of me. Because you know everyone's out here trying to get us in their group. Yeah. Everyone wants one more in their clan. And I just don't know how to tell them, like, I love you. I'm open, but I have boundaries. Like my sister the other day goes, what's your ideal day look like? I was like, oh, me and partner, mm -hmm. um, no electricity, no internet, no distractions, just chilling in our house, outside, maybe going to the beach, maybe just like being with each other, but nobody else. And I just want like, I want to be myself hundred percent. And he's the only person I can do that with. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's not an ideal day. She's like, well, am I not in your ideal mm -hmm. day? I was like, I love you so much. No, <laughs> because I love her, but we're talking about ideal day. Yeah. And that is just me being myself 100%. Because look, even when I'm with my family, even when I'm with my sister, I have to think about how I'm talking. Yes. Yeah. I have to be considerate to her feelings. Not that I'm not considerate to my partners, but because he understands me, I don't have to um, filter as much, if at all. Like, I don't have to. The worst thing I have to filter when I'm with him is my intrusive thoughts. I wonder. So, I feel like I was just going to say, like, that knowing yourself mm. allows you to be able to do that. But I think if you don't know yourself, you have these expectations of people. Oh. Like, this is like also maybe why I'm also a little bit um, avoidant of making too many close friendships mm. because I want to avoid those expectations. Um, I There's like all these friend groups um, that are predicated on having basically the same thoughts. Totally. <laughs> Totally. And, if and it's all y'all. Don't even act like, oh, that's not my group. It's your group too. If you're in a group, you already did it. Yeah, like I, I can't think of like, and, and I feel like there's that kind of um, pressure, right? Like when you enter a group or a space and you're very aware of the rules of that bubble yep. and you're playing by those rules yep. and you're aware that they're expecting you to, you know, Act in the same way, think in the same way, joke um, in the same way. Yes, exactly. Have have the same um, boundaries as them in regards to what you're allowed to talk about or not mm -hmm. talk about, what you're allowed to joke about and not joke about. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I think part of how that inner circle forms is when there those expectations either align mm. or aren't there. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah, based. Yeah, like the lack of like just radically accepting mm -hmm. and not expecting the change. Yes. I feel the best in those situations, if mm -hmm. I'm being honest with you, because sometimes when I feel the pressure for my friends to be like, Brittany will come around, I'm like, ooh, why are you holding yeah. this space for a future Brittany that's probably mm -hmm. not going to exist? Because it gives me, again, though, it goes back to that, if everyone perceives you differently mm -hmm. in your head than who you feel like you are. And that's why you have to know yourself. So when people do give you mm -hmm. feedback, maybe they're right, and you're like, oh, I'll use that. Or maybe yeah. they're wrong, and you're like, oh, I appreciate it, but I'm not going to use that. Yes. Because you don't want to run into this. Like, I definitely, when I was younger, which makes sense, I was growing. I would be like, oh, maybe that's right. Is this who I am? Mm -hmm. Is is this who I am? <laughs> and then I would have to ask myself. And again, ask yourself till you can't ask yourself anymore. Because that's how I do it. I like take a ball of, I imagine like mm -hmm. it's a cobweb. And I'm just like, okay, let's just take it apart slowly. And really get to the core of what is at the bottom of this thing. And I sometimes think like it will never happen quite. But it always gets you closer all the same. I do wonder, like, what's the line between knowing yourself, knowing when somebody's wrong about you, and then denial. Ooh. Mm. And 
I also think about like this is like a moment I had when I was on an edible and I was thinking about like the bubbles colliding and I was like oh my god like I want control about how around mm. how I'm perceived which when I told my boyfriend he was like yeah you're just a human being <laughs> which makes sense right we all? But, but then I was like am I a narcissist because Great I question. want to control like how I'm perceived or am I just someone who is hurt when yeah. I'm misperceived totally right um and I think about also like, okay, am I somebody who wants to control my bubbles or am I somebody who just, you know, has these boundaries that maybe I didn't even know I had and maybe they got crossed or they got poked mm. and maybe it's unpleasant and uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? There's like this balance Great of like, questions. Am, I, am I in denial or am I having a human moment? Great questions. That is like, and that's what's so scary, especially as a content creator, I'm always like, am I a narcissist? <laughs> and then I realize like, okay, no, it's not your narcissism, but it is like a pain where you're like, why do people see me that way? Yes. What have I done? But then I realized like, okay, if they see me this way, where are they coming from? Mm -hmm. And is there validity to that idea and that concept? Now, again, mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at this point knowing the differences. And again, there are very slick people that I trust the most in my life to call me out because they mm -hmm. will call me out like, even though they're different from me, like my farm mm -hmm. brother, even though he's so different, he genuinely can call me out through my own values and not his. Mm -hmm. Versus my mother, God bless her, she cannot judge me through my own values. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. She, I'm on the rod, and she's like, Betsy, you're having many abortions. And I was like, I did a period every month. I have been pregnancy tested mm -hmm. every two months by my doctors because I was going through all this testing. I am not aborting babies. Mm -hmm. And she goes, but you could be. And I was like... I don't think that's why are you putting like that anxiety on your yeah, consciousness as yeah. well it's like and also i'm pro-abortion so it doesn't really matter but that's the problem is she's like so you're okay she's like you're okay with having an abortion and i was like i mean i am pro-choice <laughs> so that's the dilemma too if she could see me through my lens though it'd be so much easier and safer to have the conversation mm -hmm. because at the end of the day she's right like i am pro-life enough to know that i'm terminating a pregnancy which is like a life in motion right mm -hmm. so i'm happy to have the conversation but not if that, that not in a way if we can't reach some sort of safe space to say like oh yeah see like when we go to war we kill people's babies when we deny people food stamps we didn't kill baby babies when we go to abortion clinics we're killing like i want to have the full conversation i can't just have a part of it mm -hmm. which is why when i am in people's bubble they go mm -hmm. <laughs> and then because i'm not fighting them back they go oh she's one of us yeah it's yeah. like a catch-22 i'm screwed if i do and i'm screwed if i don't and i wonder also that ability to judge by your values mm. and not by their values. Mm. I wonder how much of that, I mean, obviously with inner circle, you'd hope that there's like that communication of like, these are my values. Right. But then with um, strangers, parasocial relationships, acquaintances, coworkers, I feel like there's, um, there's just like, I don't know your values. So I can only judge you by mine, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that can also cause some chaos. Um, in a way because um, I, I'm trying to think of like a good example and like my values are so specific they're very SoCal they're very like secular so I'm like okay oh so I there's like this church nearby um, and I saw like a ton of women walking into that church in like little mini dresses oh and I was like what's this that's interesting I've never seen that before and um, I guess I like attempted to judge by that church's values but I have no it's not it's not it's one of those like um it's not like an Orthodox or Catholic church or even a Protestant or Baptist church it's like one of those new whatever churches mm -hmm. I have no idea but like I was like oh I don't even know what this church's values like, what's are the expectation? right because I know like some of the values of like the catholic church and the orthodox church but this one I'm like whoa that's weird right totally. and I don't even know okay by my values that's totally fine by that church's values is it fine I guess it must be because there's like this whole group <laughs> just walking right no, now I do the same thing I'm yeah. all like ma'am what is Jesus looking at you and then I'm like wait do you even is Jesus here yeah. at this church? Yeah. Like, is this Jesus church? What kind of church is this? Did you see that, um, the post I posted, um, or did you see it on Instagram at all where it was like, um, dressing up my baby to go to school and it was like a six year old oh, and like, yes, 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 yes. Clothes. Like, okay, yes. here's my thing. So I'm mm -hmm. looking at that and I'm like, every part of my body is screaming like, mm -hmm. no, like, no, what are you doing? But then I'm wondering like, is this my bubble? And is there a reality where dressing six year olds up like, adult women is appropriate and I just can't justify it. I know. Yeah, I'm th I think about that too because on one hand, I'm thinking 
a kid should be could wear anything, and if you sexualize them, you're a pervert. Like fuck. True. You. Right. On the other hand, I do think that there's a reason that humanity has developed this delineation between child, adolescent, and adult, and you know we have, um, and we have you know different styles of dress for them. Just historically, yeah. I feel like that's always been the case, mm -hmm. and a lot of kid clothes is for convenience. A lot of adult clothes is for aesthetic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so and at the same time i'm like okay maybe you want your kid to look aesthetic i guess but also a lot of adult clothes is also for you know sexualization, sexualization. <laughs> exactly yeah, objectification. so it's like it, it's like what aesthetic are you trying to communicate by putting your child in these clothes mm -hmm. because clothes do communicate things absolutely and you know um I do also wonder, like, the different, like, I guess, acceptable ways we play around with dress, right? So I think that um, cross-dressing mm -hmm. or, like, being gender non-conforming, I think that's fucking dope. I'm mm -hmm. all for that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and then in other bubbles, it's like, whoa. Totally. And so I also, but I don't know if I want to compare it to this necessarily because an adult woman dressing like an adult man or an adult man dressing like an adult woman, that's you know, you're you're still aligned on the adult part. Totally, totally. But when people play around with different, so whether dressing kids like adults or even adults dress as kids, there's mm -hmm. something in my brain mm -hmm. that goes like, ooh, even though it's like they're adults, mm -hmm. consensual, um, they're fine, I'm not trying to kink shame or anything, mm -hmm. but there's just something in my brain personally that really, um, that really doesn't like that age kind of mm -hmm. mm, not crossing over or like yeah like cross-dressing but for age <laughs> i kind of have this desire well i have this allowance that says anything that's done in a safe space where it's just adults i can get behind mm -hmm. anything that involves cross-contamination with age groups yeah. and then age play or yes. age aesthetic makes yes. me start to go like what are we doing what are we doing what are we doing and again it's not because i'm worried for my safety i'm worried for the safety of children yes. so my brain is like what are we trying to convey here with dressing our children up like they're going to be out in the club scene like yes. what are we what are we saying to our child is beautiful what are we telling society our daughter is for our boy is for like our sons are for what are we you know there was a documentary i think we've talked about it before we did in our last podcast about the most beautiful boy in the world yes yes even yes. that makes me uncomfortable like yeah. saying this child is beautiful like look how beautiful and then showing this child around yeah. like they're this thing to be admired it just humans are so into worshiping mm -hmm. and i don't know how to get away from that yes i also think about like i i think about okay what if they dressed up their child in an adult dress from the renaissance okay Ooh. what kind of adult dress from the renaissance though because there's those with the corset like mm -hmm. i'd probably be uncomfortable with that as well mm -hmm. versus like a little house on the prairie moment cute right cute mm -hmm. and modest cute yeah so it's there's like i think a difference because i think there are particular clothes across time across cultures that are specifically geared towards um like looking sexy totally and so if you're within your culture dressing your child up in those clothes I, I i i do think that's us yeah here's a challenge my when i was a teenager about well not a te oh gosh i wasn't even a teenager because we were living in this part of california so i must have been about 11 maybe 12 and you know mm -hmm. i was getting my period almost and my boobs were growing in and all that stuff and my my mom bought me like little training bras mm -hmm. but my cousins when i was at their house they'd let me wear their underwear and it was like lingerie like see-through mm -hmm. lace my push-up bra like my boobs were sticking out mm -hmm. and i remember being like on a scooter and like mm -hmm. what are these like you know when you wear those leggings that go only this high okay oh, yeah yeah exactly and they were floral and i had this pink shirt on i remember riding on my scooter and being like trying to impress like 11 year old boys mm -hmm. and i was like this and i remember the boys saying like ew your boobs are i can see your boobs like they're pointy and i was like <gasps> like i was trying to be sexy mm -hmm. as a young girl but my mom was so upset at my auntie for letting me wear that yeah. because even though i was in a t-shirt my boobs were just so madonna yeah and my mom was like betty you are a child you do not need mm -hmm. to be wearing lingerie and for a child being me i was like well i want to look pretty and i don't ever feel pretty and i'm confused about when i get to feel pretty all my friends feel pretty to me and mm -hmm. i just don't feel pretty 
And again, do you want to feel pretty or do you want to feel sexy? Yeah. Do you want to feel beautiful or do you want to feel like an object? And there's that, that line that's so hard, I think, for all of us. I hope that when my kids grow up and they see the way that I live my life, and I'm going to raise them so sex positive, bro. <laughs> like if we have kids so sex positive, I still want them to know there are boundaries for like, hey, you're a kid. Even anime, my partner and I love anime. There are certain animes that objectify women to yeah. such a degree that I cannot in good faith offer this to my children because I don't want them to internalize that this is what women are for. I want them to make that decision when they're 18 and decide to join the tape bubble. Oh, I, yeah. I want them to wait. I want them to make the decision when they have all the information. You know what I mean? But again, where is that line? Like, where is the line? I mean, even when you said 18, that's such an arbitrary line, really. Because True. that's not when the brain finishes developing. Yeah. So what is it? I don't know. What is uh, it? Yeah. So, um, and I think about like, um, 16 year olds dress themselves and yeah. they often will dress like adults mm -hmm. um and i think they have the right to do that and then explore whatever that means you know with people their age and in their age group and whatever like because i've done that too and totally. i wasn't trying to look sexy for grown men i was trying to look cute and sexy for guys my age yeah, of course um so i think that's totally fine but then like okay but i think kids also like i remember as a kid like liking people and wanting mm -hmm. to be appealing to them um I guess it's like, it's really like, are you, is your kid dressing themselves like that? Or yeah. are you? Mm -hmm. Because if your kid is, I, I highly doubt, like kids want to copy their parents. Right. Yes. But I don't know. But also like mini skirts and tube tops are not comfortable to play in. Mm -mm. So like me as a kid, like I'm probably wanting to wear like little overalls or something, you know, <laughs> and still looking cute. <laughs> okay, this is something, and I'm going to be very judgy of this bubble, but I don't mean to be. It's just something that I'm like, that's interesting. And again, you're going to point it at me and be like, I'm oh, Brittany, excuse me, you're in this bubble. Exactly. So just bear with me. I don't want to be a hot mom. Mm. You know those moms that are like platinum hair, boobs, mini dresses, like from Mean Girls. Yes, <laughs> I am a cool mom, but it's like yeah. those moms, like I don't have a desire to be that mom, but I want to be a mom that's kind of like a hippie, so I'll technically be more naked than clothed. Mm -hmm. But again, the idea of it is to be relaxed and one with nature, not one with my boobs as a sexual object, not one with yeah. my hips as a sexual object, mm. more like uh like wonder woman status like all those warrior women like they were wearing like little like you know yeah. they were showing some leg and some titty and stuff but like they weren't sexualized it wasn't the same energy yeah. and so i do want to be a mom that's comfortable with her kids i want her to i want my kids to feel like the body is not a threat to you mm -hmm. but i also don't want to be a mom that's like pushes some sort of narrative that your job is to be hot i do think there's like um, maybe some Evo psych evolutionary psychology people can chime in, but there's like this, um, this line where something's like not sexualized, not sexualized, oop, sexualized. And I think it's a level of like exaggeration, mm. right? So like push a bra, mm. exaggerating, mm. just boobs, boobs, breastfeeding mm -hmm. boobs, boobs, mm -hmm. right? Not necessarily sexualized, um, heels, exaggerating, mm -hmm. you know, versus mm -hmm. some sandals. I mm -hmm. mean, some people are foot fetishists i guess so sandals are sexualized to them mm -hmm. but like i mean in general right when we yeah. when we exaggerate um lip filler exaggerating bold you know makeup looks exaggerating their emphasis we're creating yes. an emphasis to say yes. look at this particular thing which don't get me wrong i was like in the mirror earlier i was like going like this and i was like titty 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 and i was like man i'm gonna note to self pull this dress down when i'm with my partner and so he sees my boobs yeah i have the boob window but my but boobs kind of fell but like the thing about your like outfit today, mm -hmm. super cute, super inappropriate for my family, but yes. super to me, very like muted sexually, but very beautiful and mm -hmm. accentuating, but not in any way like hot mom, more like hot, like a beautiful person. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe I'm like distinguishing some sort of earthy tone to it mm -hmm. instead of a superficial tone. But I mean, like, again, like you mentioned with your parents, this would be a, definitely a no-go to sexualize. To sexualize. So it's like, so then, but then, so then the people who are like, I'm the hot mom, I want to dress my kid like this, they could argue, well, you're acting like the Catholics right now. Which is, which I'm like, okay. Um, I do have like, again, which I think most of us do as human beings, we have this like, urge to be protective over children mm -hmm. um yeah i do wonder where as hum i don't think we can as humanity draw a line honestly because mm. it would just be preferences be hot moms, right yeah and you know we can't mandate that out of a 
out of existence or whatever, but we can say, okay, this is not going to be how I'm interacting with my children. And this isn't the, like, I don't want to curate my bubble to include this subset of people in it, yes. which is ex exclusionary and judgy, but that's how we curate our bubbles. I feel like it's more reasonable to be exclusionary than to be yeah. inclusive so the chaos comes in. So again, we're not talking about race or orientation yeah. or any of those things, though it could be, I guess, for you guys. Don't be weird, but like, do your thing. <laughs> but for me, it's more like, like, okay, I'm so excited to move to Europe and my partner's parents are very like queer, okay, and they're very relaxed and they're atheists and they don't care. And I'm so excited to go into his bubble with that energy than my bubble because if he came into mine, girl, he wouldn't last 30 seconds with my parents before he's like, okay, I'm going to do it. And I'm like, <laughs> like, like, that's the problem is like we would create chaos by just, I, one of the greatest gifts I'm going to give my parents is distance. Mm -hmm. And I love them and they are my inner circle people. I consider my inner circle because they know me like in a way I can't explain to you guys. And at the same time, my joy is found either alone by myself or with my partner. Mm -hmm. like truthfully because my joy again is coming from me and I'm just like I don't care what people are doing so the problem is like I usually only care what people are doing if they're in my face yes exactly and I also think about like the different degrees or um like for example um in curating my bubble I wouldn't want like a Tate or somebody mm, who has shares right. that ideology in my bubble um he can be over there mm -hmm. I can be over here mm -hmm. it's cool um I wouldn't want, you know, somebody who dresses up their child like that in my yeah. bubble. But there's also different degrees. Like, maybe I'd go to a Tate bubble for, you know, something. And maybe I'd go to the hot mom bubble for something else. Mm -hmm. Or not even the hot mom bubble. Maybe my coworker is a hot mom mm -hmm. who dresses her kids up like that. Okay, so I'm going to go to her in regards to, you know work or whatever kinds of things and I'll go into the Tate bubble in regards to, I don't know, starting a business or getting negged. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I go there for. Literally, but, literally. But like, or maybe like, um, you know, somebody might be in the Tate bubble but we happen to have a commonality on something else. Maybe right. we're both at the gym. Maybe that person is right. really knowledgeable about form and physique and everything. I'll go to that person. In, like, But because they are in that bubble that I want to create boundaries around, they won't enter into inner circle, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So there's still like, like it's not period I'm never interacting with you unless, you know, there's some certain things. But, but there's definitely like a, you have a limitation of how far, um, of how close proximity you can be to me mm -hmm. based on these things. And I don't think that's like, I feel like people act like gatekeeping or being mm. exclusionary is some sort of crime, but I think we all have the right to self-association and, mm. um, and deciding who we would like to be around as individuals. Um, I, it, you know, but then how macro do we want to take that? I don't know, but I definitely think as individuals, we have a right to decide who we want to be around. It's interesting because my inner circle is so far from me. Like no one in my inner circle agrees on reality with me. Like none of them see the world exactly like I see it. There's always like variations. Um, and it's interesting because when they talk, like people often say to me like, how could Brittany form this opinion about me? And I'm like, do you hear yourself when you tell me things? Like, I don't know if people hear themselves when they tell me things, but because I'm not judging them, like, full on, like, disavowing them in that moment, they're like, oh, she must be chill. But it's like, I'm hearing you talk. Like, there was a discussion happening on the Discord about that guy who brake checked kids in a school bus. I didn't. So it was elementary school kids. And the bus driver. Yeah. Brake checked. But is it because he was trying to stop? Like, no, he was trying to warn them. He's like, you need to sit in your seats. And blah, oh, blah, blah. Okay. And the kids were like standing up and down in their seats. Mm -hmm. I, from the video, I couldn't tell. It didn't look like mm -hmm. they were in the aisles, but maybe they were. Yeah. So he's like, do you want to see why that's dangerous? And then he brake checked them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nobody's going to brake check my, you're an employee. Mm -hmm. Your job is to take my kids from A to B. Yes. Mm -hmm. In a safe manner, but write them up. If they're acting out of turn, mm -hmm. don't brake check my kids. So for me, I was like, no, this is not okay. But for somebody else, like in my inner circle, they felt like, yeah, give him a medal. He like did the right thing. I would have slapped my kids. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't let that friend babysit my kids. Yeah. Because again, if you're okay with this guy brake checking kids, you're not safe enough. Now I can't give you my kids because I don't want you brake checking my children. You know what I'm saying? So again, I don't know if people hear themselves when they say things, mm -hmm. but I want them to know, like, I'm not judging you, the consciousness. I'm saying this is just how we're so differently raising our children. It'd be better for me just to take my kids to school than to entrust them in somebody who would who would think this is okay in a way you treat yeah. your children like even that mom who dressed her kid up that way mm -hmm. I don't want to send my kid over to that house yeah 
and then have her tell my kid like yeah like this is how you should like no offense what kind of men are around those children yeah. what kind of women are around those mm -hmm. children god forbid there's like a family friend who comes over mm -hmm. and is objective or if they're taking pictures of my kid and putting it on some website like yeah. i don't know what you're doing with your children but it's not gonna be mine Mm -hmm. And so that is me being exclusionary in a way that says, like, I will protect my kid against the whole world. I force them into existence. Yes. I'm certainly not going to force them into your homes where you're not even mm -hmm. prioritizing the safety of your own children. Mm -hmm. So I am judging a little bit. Like, I'm definitely gay judging 100%. And I'm not trying to say you're evil or bad. I'm trying to say that I am now feeling unsafe with my mm -hmm. child's life in your hands. And it just, like, you know, probably somebody who is super devoutly christian mm -hmm. or muslim probably wouldn't want me babysitting their kids mm -hmm. fair enough because i'm probably not a safe person to to somebody who practices those religions mm -hmm. i'm very secular um i'm an atheist what if they're in your house and yeah. your kid says something about god i to mean them? and then i have like that kind of art in my house Love it. <laughs> yeah Living so, for it. so it, it you know i wear tops like this which around you know my inner circle's kids totally mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. right um so there's definitely, I, I don't, I think like people really feel, I don't know, I, I feel like people want to be seen by everyone. They do. And I feel like that's, that's the struggle. It's like, you're not going to be seen by everyone. And if somebody thinks you're unsafe mm -hmm. from their perspective, that's, that's not, you have to know yourself enough to say, you know what, that's what it looks like. But I, it is what it is. I wonder if there's a subset of these people who, because they want to be seen by everyone because they're seen by no one. Mm. Because if you're seen by the right people, yes. I feel, maybe this is me, so I don't need to project, but I just over time need less and less and less and less from the world around me because I'm getting so self, like I'm getting satisfied. And mm. again, it's like, my again, when my friends and fr like friends, family, whatever, when you're telling me stories, I am forming your identity in my head so i'm thinking okay this is how they treat this is what they feed even how you feed your kids i'm think i'm taking notes oh you let your kids eat that i'm taking notes not that i'm judging you as a bad parent but i'm just saying if i send my kids to your house i should be considered like i should can be considered of what i'm what my kid is going to eat that day yeah you're just making plans for what place they have in in your proximity exactly and look this is the thing that i am this is why I don't believe in world peace because I, I genuinely like, you know that idea of um, if we could all just do this. Mm -hmm. But the thing is like this, whatever this is, mm -hmm. is either a nightmare to someone or a, a, a savior to somebody else. And I'm not trying to be like a relativist here, but I'm trying to say I have personal values and preferences that are going to make you feel like I'm judging you, maybe even like condemning you. Yeah. But the dilemma is, is that you have those of me and I have those of you, but I'm trying not to condemn you. I'm trying to say live and let live mm -hmm. because if it was up to me, like, I'm sick of the world. I am a little sick of the world telling me, like, um, Brittany, share more of your opinion. Oh, wait, not about me. And I was like, oh, okay. Because, like, that's the thing. Everyone in my life has to understand. The way I see them and their actions, I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is not my values. Note to mm -hmm. self, my friend does this. Note to self, my homie does this. Note to self. Because, again, I'm so shocked when people tell me things and they're like, how could you think this of me? And I'm like, I feel like people think they can't be loved if, if you don't agree with literally everything they do. Yeah. Which is interesting to me. It's a different relationship with love. You gotta receive, I feel like, I feel like some of the challenge and like I've experienced this also um, that I've realized was in my own trauma brain, but I feel like some of the challenge is being unable to receive the love that people mm. are offering you. So if somebody's like, you know what, this isn't my thing, but look, I still want you in my proximity in this manner. Mm -hmm. That's love. That's, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever you want to call it, that's something that should be valued, um, in my opinion. Um, I agree. Um, and I think the, the people who maybe are seen by no, no one, and then they want to be desperately seen by anyone. Yeah. And so they don't have any... Um, boundaries or values around like who they attempt to show themselves to yeah um and i also think about like when you are misseen or unseen or not seen but then there's an opportunity to maybe become seen in mm. a way um i recently actually in the discord had a moment like that where i didn't feel seen i felt misunderstood mm. but then i because I knew this person was super open and stuff, I was like, you know what? I may be emotionally heightened right now. You may be emotionally heightened right now, but let's go. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Because this is worth it because I know that you are an open person and that, um, and I want to see you and to be seen by you in this moment. 
and we hashed it out and it was beautiful and I loved it. Like I keep using it as an example. The effort is hard. Making but... an effort is hard. Mm-hmm. And I think about, but then it's also like choosing your battles Ooh. because there might be other people where I'd be like, okay, you know what? I don't want to put an effort mm-hmm. like that. Absolutely. And I don't want I to have, have this conversation. Yeah. So it's like recognizing when it's worth to, you know, be like, please see me. Mm-hmm. And when it's worth to just be like, all right, you don't see me. Cool. Let's, yeah. Like no hard feelings yeah. even. Like there's yeah. almost, I think that's why I've become so much m- more patient with the world and patience is not something I usually have because I'm working on it. But literally, when I could look at them and say, okay, this is their toolbox. This is how they're seeing me. Like OF, right? Everyone's like, Brittany, when you have kids, they're going to hate you because you're on OF. Why would my kids hate me if I raise them in a sex positive bubble and I raise them seeing OF as a job, as a possible outlook for even them when they reach adult age? So the dilemma, again, we're having is that, yeah, if you raise your kids in a bubble where you demonize, Mm -hmm. then sure, your kids might hate you. But they would only hate me from the peer pressure. But I expect my kids to kind of go out in the world and be like, what do you mean your parents don't have that? Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Like, I want my kids to be like, okay, cool. This is how you do things. And then receiving that love, like, I think I resented and hated my parents for so long because I couldn't and I didn't want their version of love. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until after therapy and after DBT and everything that I learned, okay, I I see this as love now. I get Mm -hmm. it. I wish their love wasn't so rooted in fear. Yeah. I wish they were cat, like different, like I wish they expressed their love differently, but at the same time, at least I know it's love. And at least now it's on me to say, I love you so much. Here's how much of your love I can handle before now I feel suffocated by it. Yes. And that's okay too. Like even my besties, my friends, all of them are so uniquely different. They're really, truly unique consciousness. Like they're their own people. They're not me. So to ask my friends to love me, except the way they know how feels so mean. Yes, I do want to like disclaimer, caveat, caveat. Abuse is not love. Blah blah blah. Right, 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 yada, right. Yada. Right. Um, and I feel like, but I feel like there's also like, I don't want to say exaggeration, but everybody's been learning like all the psychology terms, gaslighting. When you could just say you're lying. Yes. <laughs> gaslighting, yeah. manipulator, narcissist, um, yeah. abuser, yeah. etc. I feel like people discover those words and think that because they are having intense emotional reactions that it must be these things causing them Mm -hmm. instead of you know when you have relationships with people you're gonna have heightened emotions sometimes and you're not gonna always be you know floating along right um and i think dr k talks about this too how our distress tolerance is severely lacking oh um so i do also think about like there's that challenge of the people who grew up in abusive environments and then can only see abuse as love. Yeah. But then also the people who their grandma voted for Trump or whatever and now their grandma is a narc abuser. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. To, right? Like, you gotta, like... There's, like, a, a balance to strike there. And, there really is. And everybody, I guess, has to go on their own journey to find it. I think when you're growing up as a teen, everything is very dramatic. Everything is very painful. Um, and everything is very... Um, what's the word? I guess I used all the words I wanted to use. <laughs> yeah, like the end of the world. Yeah, or like now I can make a drastic change. Yes. I remember thinking like, oh, my parents die. I'm never talking to mm-hmm. them again. But truly, I just wanted them to love me in a way I could understand. And now that they do, or now that I can, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I get it now. Like, my dad will literally be like, you're the reason this country is ending. Do you want soup? Yeah. And I'm like, yes, I would like soup. I'm going to ignore that first part. (laughs) (laughs) Because, like, I get what he's saying. He's so worried about the world, especially as an immigrant. He's like, oh, my gosh, is America dying? Is it because of the progressives? It's because of you. And And he's he's like, what about you, He is. He's like, Betsy, please. Like, you're going to, your kids, what world are they going to grow up in? And that's a fear that I think he's right to have because I wonder that as well. Like I'm like, maybe the world doesn't deserve my kids because I don't like the world. But then again, there's no time in history I've ever liked the world. Yeah. So I can't even pretend like that's what I'm trying to explain to people. I don't like how most of the world operates, but I appreciate that everyone is finding their joy separate from my own. Because again, I don't hate it because I think it's unethical all the time. I just don't like it. Like the way I don't like bananas. I'm like, no, I'm not going to eat those just because you want me to. I completely forgot about your banana thing and I was going to cut up some bananas in that fruit salad. Thank goodness I didn't. That was, that was whatever. I would have smelled them this whole time and been like, oh my God, what's happening? Okay. Okay. Good thing I didn't. I was like, you know what? It looks so pretty. By the way, I just keep looking at it. I'm like, look at all those colors, bro. (laughs) Yeah, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Okay. You were going to say? Um, I was going to say, 
I think it's okay to dislike things, and mm. I think for some reason people feel that it's not okay. Yeah. But it's okay, and we're not meant to get along with every single person in the world. There's like, s I think, again, evolutionary psych people comment below. But I think like humans are supposed to have like maybe up to 150 close-ish connections, mm -hmm. like period. That's all my cousins, I'm done. I'm right, exactly. Out. So like it, it's on the, and trying to, like the, the, I remember this happened a lot on Facebook groups. So I used to go in a lot of Facebook groups and there'd be like 10,000 people. Woo! And there'd be all these rules, right? Um, of socializing, of how we interact with each other. And every single time they, those groups would either eventually implode mm. or get overrun with people who basically thought the exact opposite way mm. that that group was made to think, if that mm. makes sense. Um, so like those super large like echo chambers, they just don't last. They end up imploding. Um, and by large, I mean like over a thousand people in like one group. Um, we're just not meant to find that harmony, I don't think, in that large of a of a setting. Um, which like, I like society, I love a big city. Mm. But what I love about a big city is that for the most part, everybody minds their business. Uh, so I have my circle, yep. I have my 150 <laughs> or whatever, yep. I have however many people I wanna interact with that are gonna be up in my business to some extent and everybody else is minding their own business. And mm -hmm. that is what I like about the city. Yeah, I will say that's one of the perks actually. Cause like bro, even in the small town I just came mm -hmm. from, legit, one of my neighbors was like, we haven't seen you walk the dog in a while. And I was like, we've been going out the front door. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, do you have nothing else to do? And that's the thing is like in the city, I do feel like, hey, we managed to get along and that's really nice. Yes. I do feel overwhelmed by the traffic and everything, but the anim on an anim anonymity, yeah, anonymity is yeah. really lovely in some way because mm -hmm. you're just like, hey, bro, don't mess with me. I won't mess with you. We're all just trying to get yes. home. We're all just trying to get home versus like in a small town, which was really lovely and I loved it. I would get so much anxiety going to Walmart because I knew everyone was going to talk to me. They're going to be like, how is this? And this... The people at Walmart have not only met my partner and know more about him than the internet, <laughs> but like they are total strangers in this random town. They're like, so where are you from and what do you do and everything? And then you just don't want to tell them no, so you talk to them. Or even my, my neighbors are so sweet. They're old people. And they're like, can you send us a postcard from Europe? Oh and I was like, gosh. they're like, can we have your email so we can keep in contact with you? And I was like, that is so, so sweet. Um, yeah, we'll do that for a bit. And then I'm going to slowly say goodbye. <laughs> Because it's, I don't know that they're thinking in my head, like, I'm young. I'm going to be alive for another 70 years. Yeah. You have another, like, 20. <laughs> you want us to stay in touch because we were neighbors once for, like, 20 years? Or is the social... So then I'm like, what's the social game here? Like, mm -hmm. what am I supposed to say? What is the expectation? Because they were the best neighbors. They were so nice. I don't want them to feel like I don't didn't like them. But also, I'm kind of... I wish people would just say, thank you for knowing me for this moment. Good luck. Yes. Like, I kind of want to let people go. I want them to know you can move on from this. You do not have to stay friends with me as the years go on. Like I said, I don't know how long I'll know you. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? Like, how long do yeah. you think we'll know each other? Like, I don't know. I mean, that's that's what I also say, like, about the Discord space. Mm. Like, I think some people are like, why aren't you best friends with everybody? Mm. I love the space, by the way. Join the Discord. Um, I love the space. Um, but And that's what I love. Am I gonna keep in touch with everybody once the space is gone? Mm -hmm. No. Nope. <laughs> like, yeah. That's what I appreciate is the space um, and the kind of conversations we get to to have there. Mm, so, I think it goes back to that loneliness thing, though. Yeah. If they're not being seen, and my Discord really does really well in giving people a space. Everyone mm -hmm. can say things. We try to give people the benefit of the doubt. We even have fights, and we all end up yes. okay at the end. It's really cool. But again, I don't want people coming to my Discord and thinking like, I'm going to be here for 80 years. Like, girls, go have families. Go live your life. Get your degrees. Go get your jobs. Go do go do you. The Discord is a space to facilitate conversation for this moment. Yes. Actually, one of the greatest things on my Discord is that people always take breaks. Like, Discord breaks. Oh, yeah. They're like, guys, this Discord was distracting me. I had to take a break. That is what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. I do not want my Discord to become your new addiction, your new cope for loneliness. Yes. Oh, my God. I do not want my Discord to become your new cope. Like, that is not what I want. I want it to be a space where you can facilitate and gain tools to go utilize it in your real life. And if my Discord or parts of my Discord become your real life, cool. Like, yeah, you know, that's how I met my person, right? Like, that just to have that, like, that's great. But again, what if our relationship only lived on the Discord? How toxic would that be? That would not yeah. be a real relationship, right? Again, I think um, my audience is older and they are aging with me, so I think it won't be that much of an issue. But I can imagine if we were all 18 and 19, mm -hmm. how that Discord could become like our new 
you know what I'm saying? But I think I think that's fairly normal again, like in those years. Mm, um, but totally. again, I found that when I was that age, um, I would I would hang around in spaces similar to that Discord on Facebook. Absolutely. Groups, and they were they were similar in that people would have conversations. Some people would like you know become friends for real outside of those groups. But when they're when they would eventually implode. <laughs> they would eventually implode. It just does. Yeah. It does. And it's supposed to. That's what I'm saying. There's something yeah. really beautiful about things ending. Mm -hmm. There's something beautiful about a bubble coming in and colliding and then separating again or meshing yes. and making a new bubble or whatever it's going to do. At the end of the day, we are all human beings with a completely different re like relationship with reality. It's great that I can meet you and mm -hmm. we can switch, like share ideas and go like, how do you think? What is and then whatever it ends up being, it ends up being. But this pressure of like, are you my new inner circle? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if you were meant to be, like some some people will say to me, oh, Brittany, if you had the spoons, we would have been in inner circle. That's the wrong way to view it. Yeah, because you don't have the spoons. I so don't have the spoons, but also, <laughs> I think if you were going to be, I would, the spoons would appear. Yes, yes. I also think about that, like who I'm around and whether they're neutral spoons, giving me spoons or taking spoons. Yes. And that's also a way to evaluate proximity. And I, I, I do think about like, so, for example, the tape bubble. I would say interacting with that bubble takes oh, spoons. Takes spoons. Takes spoons. Takes them. Therefore, them. you have like a limited proximity to me. Yes. Um, yes. You know, the Discord, I would say usually neutral spoons, sometimes taking spoons. So it could go yes. either way, right? Yes. So it's it's... I think that's also like a good good thing to evaluate is like what's your energy like around this person and also what's this person's energy like around you are you mm. sucking out all of their energy <laughs> and like you're attracted to them because because they are giving you energy and you mm -hmm. are and you're not giving any any of that back they're not gaining that from you exactly um, so that's that's also like something to consider um is evaluating that because because yeah. I think we all have those people that like really want to be around us because mm -hmm. they feel energized mm -hmm. by us and then we're just like drained at the end of the day even though we might be having fun like I don't think taking spoons automatically means I don't want to do it I don't like right. it like I play Dungeons and Dragons and it takes spoons mm -hmm. but like I love it and, yeah like, I want to keep doing it and I want to set aside spoons for that so I'm not saying that taking spoons is like a bad thing. My job takes but, spoons. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I still <laughs> love it and I do it. Yeah. I was editing the podcast the other day. I was like, my job is easy. Do not complain. My job is easy. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. I was going like this because YouTube kept rejecting my podcast. And I was like, <gasps> and I was like, my spoons were just, I was yeah. dead by the end of the day. But do I still love my job? Absolutely. Do I still love the people around me? Absolutely. Actually, just driving here, it's quite a distance. Yeah. And my brain is like, okay, this is going to take so many spoons to drive, so many spoons mm -hmm. to drive back. Like, think about what you need to do. Like, I'm glad we're eating after this because yes. I'm going to need some energy to drive me home. And like all of those things, I want to be here. I want to be here. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I want to make that drive every day. Yep, exactly. Okay. And again, even my own family who I love so much, like forever and ever, I love you. I need distance. I love you. We've spent too much time together. I love you so mm. much. Like I love my inner circle. But for Brittany, inner circle doesn't mean I always want to be around you. Yes. Heck, I don't even want to be around myself sometimes, okay? <laughs> Girl, sometimes I just want to like, mm, I can't deal with my overthinking or my looping or whatever. So again, we're, I'm trying to give people tools here. We are, I'm not trying to condemn you. I don't want to speak for both of us here. I keep saying we, but I don't <laughs> want to condemn people. I want to give you an option. Like, hey, just so you know, you don't have to live this way. Like I put out that tweet where I was like, just so you know, you don't have to live this way. And everyone's like, oh, wh why are you doing that? And I'm like, yeah. I'm just saying you don't have to. You can, if you would like. For every Tate, there's a woman who wants to date him. Yes. But it's not the only option. Like those Miami mm -hmm. girls on Fresh and Fit, they're like, this is just how the whole world is. Girl, you think the whole world? Like you think the whole, who is this whole world? Like what about the Amish? <laughs> right there. What about the Mormons? What about Utah? Like yeah. what about anything other than, like Miami is not the world. That's why it's yeah. called Miami. Like it's just so strange to me how people like can't put it together. I do also, I think about that too. I think people apply depth that isn't there and like mm. I have a little bit of experience with that like on the Jubilee video when I read the comments people are like oh these people must be doing this because of this and they must be feeling this way and I'm like it wasn't that deep it was a fun video you know we had fun and that was that like it was whatever exactly and I think people apply like this depth to tweets to anything having these whole conversations around it when you're saying hey I don't like this thing oh this must be because psychoanalyzing psychoanalyzing it's like no they actually do that to my work too when yeah. you guys take the levels like so seriously that you're like Brittany is the most evil person you are the one putting it on a pedestal and making it bigger than just an idea that's like when people are like Brittany the levels aren't even science I'm like 
I never said they were. They're just, it's like astrology. It's literally like it's, astrology. It's do you spend your whole life tearing down astrology? You're so bored. You're so bored. I mean, some people do. I don't know if they they're spend so their whole bored. lives, but like. They're it, so bored. And th I think there's also like a difference between like taking astrology like super, super seriously and making real decisions based on it. True. The same with the levels. I think the levels is a great shortcut tool to talk exactly. about what you're talking about. Um, And I think what you're just saying is this person knows themselves. This person doesn't really know themselves, but they're, you know, they're functioning. They have the tools they need need to be successful in life um yeah and you know it's like, literally it's not that deep listen my dad said this the other day and by the way if your foot is, is uh, hitting the table at all just oh, like I'm keep sorry. in mind oh, no, no you're fine you're fine so my dad the other day he literally goes and he says um oh wait oh he goes do you think i'm not smart and i was like oh that is not what i'm saying mm -hmm. Like, that's never what I'm saying. M most human beings as a species, we're very smart. We're amazing at adapting. We're amazing at growing. We're amazing at what we do in society. But we are not asking ourselves the same questions. You never have to question your religion. Well, I had to question my religion. This means we had different relationships with just that one thing. Like, my dad the other day asked me a Catholic question. And I was like, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Betsy, how could you have lost this knowledge of the Catholic religion? And I was like, you know what? I'm not really in it. I lose it. Even in politics, I forgot what this word was and I forgot if I'm not in it, I lose it. And he goes, he goes, but this, this is your life. And I was like, mm, this is your life. And again, he's not that he's not like Sneeko or H3H3 or any of those people. They're not, not smart. I just think they don't have as much information as they think they have to know the things they could know. But it's not the same thing as being smart. That has nothing to do with anything that I'm talking about. I think about. people hear like the levels and they think it's the levels of goodness. Yeah. Like the levels of smartness. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's the not. levels of introspection. Intro. You. <laughs> yes. So, funny. so I think it's, I don't know what people uh, hear, but it's interesting. I yeah. think I, it's difficult. I wonder also, like, but then I think about like how when I'm reacting to things mm. on the internet, I often don't comment on things, but I think about, maybe some famous meme videos or like mm. that one jubilee video with Aaron the vegan i don't know if you've seen that one maybe i have the oh, vegan on yes, yes yeah and then i think okay like is this like a person like did she intend to come off that way to become a meme like someone's got to be that person though that's true someone's got to be that person yes yes and then i think about like okay was it that deep for her or was she just trying to really win the game right so i'm just like i'm just like thinking like okay like because i don't i don't know this woman um so I think about like when I'm reacting on the internet, I'm like, okay, if people are projecting all of this depth mm -hmm. onto me, I feel like I need to also be aware of if I do that. Yeah. Um, for me right now, my mantra is it's not that deep. So I really try to like mind my business. If I see something I don't agree with on the internet, I, these days I just scroll on. <laughs> yeah. Because it's not that deep. I feel like people like to give themselves the anxiety though. I swear my parents yeah. are thriving on this because the, the anxiety means they're serious, which means like something matters. Mm, and yes. I'm like, yeah, nothing matters. And I was like, so you don't care about anything. And I'm like, well... I think I just take the seriousness in a different perspective. Yeah. I want to be serious, but I don't want to fucking die every day of anxiety because I'm afraid the world's going to die. I don't want to be chicken little. Yes. It's like that creating your own problem in a way. Yes. Like back in the day, I used to get into so many internet arguments. Mm. Like if I could snap and have them all deleted, I would. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that way but, all the time. Um, yeah. So I definitely like used to spend that time... And honestly, that was a time in my life where I didn't really have real responsibilities. I mean, I was yeah. in school and college and stuff like that. Um, but like now that I have a house, I have a relationship, I have like a real big girl job. Mm. Um, I, I just, I can't. Yeah. And I think people like, I think perfectly sane, responsible adults yes. can also get confused Caught and dragged down. And then, mm -hmm. you know, and at the end of the day, guys, if we all just like didn't bother each other and didn't rape and murder and steal. Think about like society and its functionality. Like, I don't want to hurt you, bro. Yeah. I'd really rather not hurt you today. So are we good? That is so simple, but nobody trusts it because we don't trust ourselves not to want to hurt people. I think mm. there's something there like that relationship because you know all the intrusive thoughts you have. But the thing is like, if we don't act on them, and we actually just try to manage, but we can't grow. Even if we had a, a, a universal, this is how we're going to yeah. treat people. All it takes is one person, two people, three people, and then they create their own family and that family lives this way. And all of a sudden we're in chaos again. So instead of trying to make everyone the same, I'm just like, please don't rape, steal, or kill me. Let's just start there. And then we'll talk about all the other details, which we'll never get to. Yeah. As long as I can have my thing over here yes. and you have your thing over there. I'll pay tax, girl. I'll participate. Yes. I won't yes. crash into you. I won't drink and drive. Just, okay, can we please? Yes. 
there is something to say about that. Now, our camera is dying. So do oh. we want to end it and wrap it up? Or are there more things you want to say? Um, I think we have plenty of content. So I think that was pretty good. Think we're good. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. That was really lovely. Yeah. If you guys want, can I put your socials in the yes. bottom? Is there going to be things? Yeah. Okay, good. Then I will link all of Arena's things down below. So please check her out. It's been really great talking to her and I appreciate you guys being here. Bye. That was pretty good, right? Yeah. That was I a think vibe. So. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool